What is up, guys? Sam Dog, the infamous 253, coming at you guys with Dallas Stewart. And now it's time to do the week two picks for the 2022 NFL season. Week one was a doozy, a crazy week. Thank you, everyone that came out to the NFL Red Zone stream. Dallas and I went 9, 6, and 1 on the week. A bunch of crazy, crazy games that went down to the wire. Overtimes, one tie between the Colts and the Texans, and a bunch of other crazy games. Dallas, how we doing? Uh, good. That was as good of a week one as you could possibly ask for. Yeah, it definitely... A lot of exciting finishes. And a lot of exciting games and exciting reactions from our red zone stream and now we won't get another red zone stream possibly until the bye week or we might do a 1 p.m slate if we decide to hang out and watch the seahawks lions game in a few weeks but anyway on to week two now we're on to the week two picks and to start it off we got an exciting battle in the afc west we got the los angeles chargers going to arrowhead to take on the kansas city chiefs the chargers Pulled it out against the Las Vegas Raiders in their house. The defense was really getting after Derek, Derek Carr. Granted, Derek Carr was hitting Devontae Adams quite a bit. Maybe a little too much. But the char the Raiders, man, the Raiders just could not handle that, that Chargers defense. With Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa, they're going to be a force this year, man. Meanwhile, the Kansas City Chiefs just went into the desert in Arizona and just freaking annihilated Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals didn't even have a chance. They should never even have showed up to that one. They were getting freaking pistol whipped most of that game. Granted, they did get a, get a turnover or so, but they could not freaking hang with Mahomes. Let's be real. Patrick Mahomes is a million times better than Kyler Murray. Even God would tell you that. Yeah, right. they, they definitely just, and I think they looked the worst out of all the NFC West teams in Week One. Yeah, they got pistol whipped big time, you more than the Rams. That, that, that they're depleted right now. <laughs> yeah, but this game's gonna be really exciting. I think I hope this is one of the more exciting Thursday night games that we get during this but season. Man, they, this was a thriller last year in like Week Fifteen when the Chiefs won it in overtime. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go for my pick here. This is going to be a good one. I mean, these teams are definitely going to be the two contending teams to win the AFC West, in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead, though. I'm going to take the more experienced Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to take Kansas City to beat the Chargers at home in Arrowhead Stadium to uh, get the first win over the Chargers. But it could really go any, any way. Justin Herbert's playing good football. The Chargers got a good defense, and... This has the makings of an exciting game, but I'm going to go Kansas City here. Yeah, give me Kansas City. Um, I think it might be a shootout. If it, uh, they're just too explosive. They're just too explosive on offense. Yeah. For um, the Chargers to sh to you know hold them down. Yeah, but we'll see. Uh, I, got, I got the Chiefs. It'll be interesting to see how much Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa can be a force for that pass rush, though. Can they rattle Mahomes? Can they get after him, put him on the ground, get a bunch of hits? That'll be a crazy game to watch. All right. Yeah, they did win it ahead last year. What? They had some success there in recent years. Yeah. The Chargers have. Yeah, but they didn't make the playoffs last year still, too. Great. Yeah. Crazy game in Vegas. All right, up next, we got the New England Patriots going to Pittsburgh to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Patriots got got waxed by the Miami Dolphins, gave up that big fourth down play to Jalen Waddle, and Waddle took it in for six like it was nothing. They just weren't ready for the humid and heat of Miami. It's like they always struggle in Miami. The Patriots always do. Meanwhile, the Pittsburgh Steelers turned over Joe Burrow and the Bengals five times, and it was a freaking struggle with kickers. None of them could which finish the game, and then freaking Boswell was able to, they were able to get in the, Trubinsky was able to drive in the Boswell range, and Boswell hit the game winner at the end of overtime, so we did not have two ties in week one. That was a freaking hell of a game that I don't think any of us expected to happen. No, that was one of the bigger upsets of week one. Uh, special teams really saved uh, Pittsburgh by blocking that extra point to send it to overtime. Yeah, Minka Fitzpatrick. When Cincinnati scored that touchdown with like two seconds left. 
Yeah, but at what cost did Pittsburgh win that game at? Came at the cost of TJ Watt with that major injury that he got. He's gonna he's gonna be out for a little while, so that's a huge blow to the Steelers yeah. defense. Man, this is gonna be a this is gonna be a tough one to pick. Mac Jones versus Mitch Trubisky though, but the Patriot the Steelers defense though, who man. I'm gonna I don't know, man. This is a this is this is a tough one. I'm gonna go ahead though. I might I never sleep on Bill Belichick though against against the Steelers and that too. But you know, actually I'm gonna actually go ahead and with the with the way that defense played, I think we might be seeing the Patriots start out 0-2. I'm gonna actually go ahead and take the Steelers. Defense. They still got Hayward, but you know it's like Mac. They still Casey. I think they could make life difficult for uh, Mac Jones. Yeah, Cameron Hayward. Yeah, Cameron Hayward. I, I also think they have a little bit of an emotional uh, letdown. So I'm gonna actually, we're gonna actually have our first split of the year. I'm actually gonna go with the Patriots to to bounce back and avoid an 0-2 start. Oh yeah, finally a split. It will be a that this was a tough this looked like a tough one. So the S and D's are going the S and D is going at the top. I think I just trust Mac Jones a little bit more than Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. It'll be a good it this is gonna be a good game in my opinion too. I think them not having Watts really gonna hurt their defense. Yeah. <sighs> but they still got Cameron Hayward on their on their pass rush and you know, Minka Fitzpatrick in the secondary could be sticking up some of the Patriot receivers and making some big plays. So I'm gonna trust that Steelers defense even without TJ Watt, man. But it's gonna be a t it's gonna be a good game. I have a feeling. All right, up next we got the Carolina Panthers taking on the New York Giants. The Carolina Panthers, Baker Mayfield did not f up the Browns like he said he was, and they ended up losing to Jacoby Brissett. Meanwhile, the Giants pulled one of the one of the couple of upsets of the week in week one going into Nashville and beating the Tennessee Titans. Man, I I don't think this is one that nobody, nobody ever saw coming, man. Yeah, that was a huge upset. I thought uh, Tennessee would just have a field day against the Giants. Yeah, we all did too. And then freaking Brian Dable having the balls to freaking go for the two point conversion after getting the last touchdown to that tight end, and then getting in, and then Brian Tannehill driving the Titans in the field goal range, and Randy Bullock just could not pull it off, man. Yeah, that's a really that's an inexcusable loss for the Titans. Yeah, but how about that 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 Cleveland Browns rookie kicker making that long kick, that long fifty eight yard field goal? to pull ahead of Carolina to beat Carolina. That was a hell of a kick for, for a rookie, man. Yeah, that was a, a great back-and-forth game. Yeah, it really was. But, you know, for this one, I think the Panthers are going to bounce back, and I think the Giants will have the emotional letdown. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the Carolina Panthers to go into MetLife Stadium and beat the Giants. I'm taking the Panthers. Yeah, give me the Panthers to bounce back from that heartbreaking loss to the Browns, and I just think the Giants are going to have an emotional letdown after that huge upset win yeah. on the road against Tennessee. So I got the Panthers to get to 1-1 one and one and to drop the Giants to 1-1. One one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, to 1-1. One one. Nice, yeah. All right, up next we got the New York Jets going to Cleveland to take on the Cleveland Browns. We just mentioned that the Browns – spoiled Baker Mayfield's plans for revenge and meanwhile the Jets got they were in it for a little bit but they could not hold back Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens our lock of the week last year was definitely lived up to that lock and the Jets just could not hang it and they're still the abysmal franchise that we know Zach Wilson injured and they had to start Joe Flacco Flacco played his former team and lost as well not the only quarterback that played their former team in recent history this week, right? Yeah, they're, they're still terrible. No yeah. matter if they had a few good draft picks this year, um, they're still going to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. It's obvious, and that's why I'm going to actually pick the I'm going to pick Jacoby Brissett and the Cleveland Browns to make it two and zero. I'm taking Cleveland. Yeah, give me 
Cleveland to get off to a surprisingly 2-0 start without Deshaun Watson. Yeah. <laughs> Up next, we got the Indianapolis Colts going to Duval in Jacksonville to take on Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Colts had that crazy game. They were down for a while to Houston, which was shocking, and they was able to pull it back in. But unfortunately, Rodrigo Blankenship could not kick it through for the win, and that game ended in a tie, and Blankenship just got released by the Colts. Wow, they released him? I'm surprised at that. Blankenship will probably end up on another team pretty fast, though, after that one. Yeah. Maybe the New York Jets replace Greg Zerline. I cannot believe Zerline's on the freaking Jets. Meanwhile, Jacksonville, they were in a battle with Washington. They were up for a little bit, but they couldn't hold back Carson Wentz and the Commanders, and Carson Wentz got his revenge for Week 18 of last year. Oh, man, I think this game's going to be a good... I think this game's going to be another good one, though. But, you know, I trust the experience of Matt Ryan. I think Matt Ryan's going to bounce back here, and I think the Colts are going to go to Duval and get a win. But I, we could be wrong again. Jacksonville upset them last year in Week 18, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take Indianapolis because of experience. I'm going to take Indianapolis. I think they're just a more better team. Yeah, I'm going to take Indianapolis to not fall for that trap again in Jacksonville like they did in Week 18 last year. Frank and- Ryan. Week one of 2020, which turned out to be Jacksonville's only win. Uh, I just, I, I think they're really pissed about losing that Week 18 game uh, last year. Frank Reich has this game marked on his calendar for sure. Who? Who that Frank Reich? Oh yeah, when they laid that egg in Week 18 with and everything now, on the line. And now he's taking on the coach that he was the OC for in Philadelphia when they won the Super Bowl. Freaking Doug Peterson. <laughs> Yeah, because you, you tie the Texans, and that's, you know, that's probably just as bad as a loss. I mean, the Texans were a team they should have handled. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but the Texans and Titans, the Texans, be about so the Texans. the Texans and Colts pretty much are tied for first in the in the AFC South, though. Yeah, pretty much, because of, of the tie. Yep. Up next, we got the Miami Dolphins going to Baltimore to take on the Baltimore Ravens. We know what happened last year. Miami pulled the crazy upset over the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens got our lock of the week against the Jets got done. And the Dolphins, they took care, they took care of their business down at home in Miami, taking down Bill Belichick, Mac Jones, and the New England Patriots with, with ease, pretty much. Their defense got after it. They beat their former receiver, Devontae Parker, which on that play to them got tipped up and intercepted. Big plays by the Miami Dolphins defense, including a strip sack with former Charger, former Steeler, former Chief Melvin Ingram getting a scoop and score house call touchdown on defense to pretty much put it to start off the scoring spree for the for the Miami Dolphins. The fourth and de- the fourth down play to Jalen Waddle that touchdown pretty much was the pretty much we, we could say was the dagger there. Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. Ravens struggled early, but then they were able to get it going. But let's be real. The Ravens were playing the Jets. This has the making. To, I hope this game is pretty good, too, you know. I think this this is going to be a good game. You want to go first on this one, Dallas? Wait, is, yeah, uh, is it in Baltimore? Game's in Baltimore this time, not Miami. Yeah, give me the Ravens to avenge that uh, Thursday night loss uh, last year and get to 2-0. Yep, circle around the Ravens. I'm going Ravens as well to get a little revenge. Last year in Miami on that Thursday night. But look out for Tyreek Hill to possibly do some things against that Ravens defense. He knows it there, too, about playing the Ravens defense from the times they played it with him when he played against Lamar Jackson with Patrick Mahomes back in Kansas City. Yeah. Ooh, all right. Up next, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming off of that 19-3 win over the Dallas Cowboys going to New Orleans to take on the Saints who had that come-from-behind win over the Atlanta Falcons with another classic Atlanta Atlanta Falcons choke job. They were up 26-10, to 10 and they were the Saints were down 26-10 to 10 and came back and just freaking... And Atlanta blew another class, blew a lead and then blocked Atlanta's kick, which they were trying... How long was that kick that Koo was trying again? I think it was like 63. I think it was like over 60. Yeah, block they they had no problem blocking that one to win. But Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady hit Mike Evans for the only touchdown. Ryan Suckup was three for four on field goals. I could not believe he missed one of those kicks though. But they had no problem take with with 
with the Dallas offense. Dallas offense had no life in that game. And they lose Dak Prescott for several weeks. Most of the season, like seven to eight weeks, I think, for Dak Prescott. Yeah, uh, it could be a while. Yeah, Saints defense, you know, got it going again, keeping Atlanta at that 26 score and then coming back on offense with James Winston. But, you know, I'm going to take the experience. I know the Saints swept the Buccaneers last couple years. Granted, they did lose to them in Drew Brees' last game in the playoffs. But I'm going to I'm gonna favor Tom Brady. I'm going to say the Buccaneers this time get a little revenge. And I'm going to take Tom Brady and the Bucs to get the dub here over the Saints. I'm taking Tampa Bay. Yeah, give me Tampa. Uh, I don't think the I don't think the Saints sweep them this year. No. Um, I think they might have a little bit of a letdown. Um, but I, I like uh, Tampa and Tom Brady to finally get a little bit of revenge on the on the Saints mm-hmm. for getting swept the last two years. Granted, they avenged that loss in the divisional round and. 2020 on their way to Super Super Bowl 55. Yeah. All right. Up next, we got the Washington Commanders taking on the Detroit Lions. The Commanders had a little bit of a fight with the Jaguars, but managed to get it get it done in the end, hitting where Wentz hit McLaurin for that game winning touchdown. Or was who did he hit? Was it McCl- Terry McLaurin? I think it was like Dot, that Dotson. Oh yeah, the the rookie, the rookie. receiver, Jahan Dotson. Hell of a receiver, man. Hell of a rook game for the rookie on that game. Detroit Lions, they were in it for a little while, but Philly almost came back. Almost came back on Philly. We put that check mark in early on Philly, and they and Philly stood up to that check mark and got a big fourth down conversion on a quarterback sneak to end the game and send Detroit home with another loss. This time it's Carson Wentz going in there, another another former Eagles quarterback taking on Jared Goff and the Lions and. I think once again the Lions will be 0 and 2 and I'm going to take the Washington Commanders to get a win in Detroit. Yeah, you know what? See Carson Wentz in Washington to get off to a surprising uh 2 0 start. But I guess it's not really surprising with uh uh who who they've played the first two games, but still uh, I like Washington. I just think they're slightly, they're, they're a little bit better of a team than Detroit. Yeah, pretty much. But Detroit could pull it off. We'll see, we'll see. Up next, we got our game. We got the Seattle Seahawks going to San Francisco to take on the San Francisco 49ers. Trey Lance, you know, I'm not so sure really about Trey Lance, you know. I mean, Grant, I know he was playing in a monsoon in Chicago and the Bears, I cannot believe the Bears the the Bears came back on him and lead blower Kyle pulled pulled another famous lead blow again. Started when freaking Justin Fields hit Dante Pettis for that touchdown. Yeah, the, that turned the game around for Chicago. Big time turned the game around for Chicago, and then it was all Bears. I mean, the defense was just getting after Trey Lance, making him uncomfortable, made Trey Lance overthrow receivers, and Eddie Jackson picked him off. Almost took it for a house call, man. It's just, I'm not so sure about Trey Lance. Meanwhile, us, we pulled a thriller. Last night, our defense made stops when it had to. We were just doing the recap video. Check out the recap video. We got the big win. And we got the big win, spoiling Russell Wilson's Bronco debut and Seahawk and Seattle homecoming in Russell's return game. And we spoiled them big time in that game, man. That was a freaking hell of a game, man. I don't freaking care. I don't freaking care what else happens the rest of the season with that. I'm just glad we won that game. Yeah. Yeah. That felt so sweet. But you know something? I kind of with this game. I like our. I like our chances going into this. If you know the 49ers start with the 49ers starting Trey Lance. Granted, they'll be in California. I'm not sleeping on them at all. But you know, it's like granted we know they got a way better defense with Nick Bosa and all those pass rushers and they got obviously have Debo Samuel but they lost Elijah Mitchell and the question is is George Kittle even going to play this week I know he didn't play in the monsoon game in Chicago should the 49ers have Kittle back I haven't heard an update on him yet and I heard Elijah Mitchell's out for two months yeah I might not getting him back till like November yeah I'm gonna that's a big loss for the running game I'm going to ask CG about George Kittle's timeline. I'm not so sure about Kittle. Hopefully CG Ruthless, if he's out there listening to this, maybe he can give us a little timetable on 
George Kittle if he's going to get back soon. Whew. Man, this is... But you know something? With the way it's kind of been, I, I like our chances against San Francisco in this game, though, even with Geno Smith, at quarterback. But, you know, i got to give the edge to San Francisco, though, for what they have, though. But I really have, think there's a chance that we could maybe pull, go in there and and maybe make San, and make San Francisco fall for a trap against us. What do you think? What are you going to go with, Dallas? Um, yeah, this is a tough one. You know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go upset here. I mean, granted, this could go either way. The the rivalry, you know. But Geno Smith, you know. But we're not so sure about how Trey, if Trey Lance will still make the mistakes. If we if we're gonna, I mean, defense in Chicago got after him. You can get after Trey Lance and freaking rattle him, make him make mistakes. Then we could make it a long day for San Francisco. Yeah, I'm gonna actually go with Seahawks to pull off the road upset. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I, I think they can do it. Yeah, I think I, I think we can do it. San Francisco is favored by like nine after that performance in Chicago. I know the weather conditions were treacherous, but that was a, they should they should have been able to handle his up business against Chicago. They had the time. easiest week one game of all the NFC West teams. They did. They had the cupcake of week one, and they couldn't get it done. And Justin Fields just carved them up. And the Bears yes, defense just got uh, out the tray. Got them starting to surprise him too, though. Yeah, that would be that would definitely be a surprise. <laughs> but we know the San Francisco could probably beat us, though. They still got Bosa in that defense, so yeah, they still uh, have a good defense, and you know we could have a little bit of an emotional letdown after last night's win. Yeah, we'll keep it in mind though. We're n we never assume with our picks, though. That's for sure. But, but I don't think it'll be wrong until they make the change to Garoppolo. Yeah, I would not be surprised if the if the four, if, after this week. if Trey continues to struggle, they need to bench him for Garoppolo. That's for sure. That's what I'm saying about the 49ers. If Trey continues to struggle, bench him for Garoppolo. I, I say Garoppolo could be starting in week three that Sunday night game in Denver. Yeah. Oh man, taking on Russell Wilson again. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Up next, we got the Atlanta Falcons. Going to L.A. to take on the Los Angeles Rams. The Falcons with another one of their classic chokes against the Saints. And the Rams got a, got manhandled by Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills in the kickoff game in their home building. Banner Knight spoiled. Von Miller had a big game for Buffalo and had two of the seven sacks that the Bills defense got on Matt Ryan. Even when they lost Ed Oliver, the Bills defense, they didn't, they didn't lose a beat at all. No, they didn't. They freaking throttled. They just throttled the Rams. And granted, the Rams had four turnovers. But let's be real. The last turnover the Rams had was in garbage time. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to take the Rams to bounce back and get their first win of the season. It's Atlanta they're playing. They should handle their business. I'm taking the Rams. Yeah, give me the Rams to bounce back. I can't see them starting off 0-2. <coughs> um Go ahead, Dallas. They're going to be really uh, pissed off about getting destroyed by the Bills on the kickoff game. And uh, I expect them to handle their business against Atlanta. Yeah, same here. All right, up next, we got the Arizona Cardinals going across the desert to the better desert in Las Vegas to take on the Las Vegas Raiders. Both these teams 0-1, the Cardinals got absolutely shit on by the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Like I said, Mahomes, it was obvious. We knew Mahomes. That probably should have been our lock of the week last last week was Chiefs over it Cardinals. It should have been with how uh, depleted the Cardinals are. And basically how bad they got absolutely crapped on by Patrick Mahomes. Meanwhile, the Raiders, man, just dropped dropped the big L to the freaking Los Angeles Chargers. Granted, they were able to pull it within four, but... The Chargers were just able to get the stops on defense. Khalil Mack went off on them and freaking just got after Carr. And Devontae Adams, he's a big weapon, though. I mean, the Raiders were feeding him quite a bit. He had one of the touchdowns in the game. And Devontae Adams actually had more yards than the Packers receivers combined in week one when the Packers got manned by the Minnesota Vikings. But, you know, with this one here, I think Devontae Adams is going to go off this time around, and this time around, with the pass rush, I think Chandler Jones is going to get revenge on the Cardinals. Him and Max Crosby 
are going to be a force. They're going to get after Midget Murray, and they're going to make Midget Murray and the Cardinals 0-2. I'm taking the Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah, give me the Raiders to bounce back uh, and drop the Cardinals to 0-2. Uh, no doubt, they have the toughest three, first three games of any team in the league. I mean, uh, uh, that is brutal. The Chiefs, the Raiders, and the defending Super Bowl champs. Yep. I don't think anybody uh, could have had a tougher start to the season than Arizona. Pottsville curse shows no mercy, right? Yeah. Pottsville the curse. curse. The Pottsville yeah. curse shows no mercy even on the Cardinals' schedule. <laughs> I don't know if there's going to do many uh, with that schedule. That's murderer's row for any team. Yeah. All right, up next, we got the Houston Texans going to Denver in the mile high to take on Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. The Texans had that tie with the Indianapolis Colts. Meanwhile, Denver and Nathaniel Hackett did not do their job. Laid an egg in Seattle, fumbled twice on the one-yard on the one yard line on the south side of the stadium, and, and freaking Brandon McManus couldn't even make a 64-yard kick to the north. The hardest end of Lumen Field to kick to has been the north. Me and my dad were talking about that last night when I was walking back to my car that the north end is the hardest end to kick to in Lumen Field. That's where most of the missed kicks are in the north. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, but you know, I was so happy. We the, we gave Denver their this is the biggest L we've ever we've given Denver since Super Bowl 48. Because this time around, yeah. obviously, they had our quarterback that we beat in that that we beat them with in that Super Bowl, and now he's on Denver, and we freaking beat him with Geno Smith, and we gave the Bron we knocked the Broncos back a big bunch in the AFC West. It's going to be a tough battle for them in the AFC West. Let's be real, you know. I mean, taking on the the loaded Chiefs and Chargers with their defense, they're they're going to have a hard time competing with those teams. But you know something. They're going to be fueled by that loss, and I'm going to take the Broncos to bounce back and handle their business against the Texans. I'm taking the Broncos. Yeah, give me the Broncos, babe. I think Russell Wilson lights them up. Uh, I won't be surprised if they drop like 35 or 40. Yeah. I, I don't know how the Texans tied the Colts. The Colts should have destroyed The Colts should have destroyed them. Yeah. Yeah. I agree on that, too. I cannot see Denver starting off on two. This is probably one of the easiest games on their schedule. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. Up next, we got the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Dallas Cowboys. The Bengals absolutely crapped themselves with Joe Burrow, crapped himself, turning the ball over five times. One of them, a house call to Minka Fitzpatrick, and Evan McPherson just could not get it done with his leg at the end of regulation where he had his PAT blocked by Minka Fitzpatrick and just shanking that kick wide and Boswell going down the field with the Steelers. Well, Trubisky got him down the field and Boswell just nailing it at the end like it was nothing to basically upset them, but they're going to be pissed about this one. The Dallas Cowboys could not get anything going on offense, just a field goal against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. They were just non-existent, and they will continue to be non-existent now, now that Dak is going to be out several weeks having to have surgery on his thumb, and they're going to have to start Cooper Rush. Who knows? Could they possibly trade Jimmy trade for Jimmy Garoppolo with San Francisco? CG was talking about that. Potential. I mean, I saw a rumor about that earlier. I don't know if CG Ruthless was maybe talking about it too, but lock of the week. Bengals are going to kill the Cowboys. Give me the Bengals lock of the week. Yeah, this is this has, this is going to be my lock of the week as well. The Bengals are going to beat up on the uh, on Cooper Rush big time. Uh, and then they're going to bounce back uh, from that very frustrating loss to the Steelers. Yeah, agreed. And up next, Sunday Night Football, we got the Chicago Bears going to Green Bay to take on the Green Bay Packers. The Bears pulled that big win against the San Francisco 49ers in the monsoon and were celebrating, sliding in the rainy grass, which Soldier Field was looking a lot like Lake Michigan out there with the way they were sliding with the water coming up in that game. And 
Justin Fields, you know, incredible second half, non-existent in the first half. Bears defense kept them in that game. Yeah, it did. And, the, and basically, when started when Debo Samuel fumbled the ball. And granted, that was in the first half. Granted, Debo did have one touchdown, and they were down like 10-0 to zero in the first half. And then the Dante Pettis touchdown just got him going. And after that, it was all it was all Bears after that. It was just all Chicago Bears in that game. Meanwhile, the Green Bay Packers got absolutely manhandled by the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. Packers are going to have, they're going to be in for a long season now that Devontae Adams is no longer there. But I'm still going to take them to get a bounce back win against the Chicago Bears on primetime. I'm always taking Aaron Rodgers over Justin Fields. Give me the Packers. Yeah, give me the, give me the Packers to yeah. bounce back and get to one and one. Yep. And uh, yeah, Aaron Rodgers is on the Bears in his career, and I, I believe it'll continue. Yeah. Up next, we got the tennis. We got two Monday night games actually this Monday. We got two of them. First off, we got the Tennessee Titans taking on the Buffalo Bills. The Titans. I cannot believe the Titans choked that game to the New York Giants, and Randy Bullock missed that kick at the end. Meanwhile, the Buffalo Bills just manhandled the Los Angeles Rams, spoiling their banner night in the NFL kickoff game. The Bills are going to be something this year. I think Buffalo Buffalo is I think Buffalo is going to make a deep run. Obviously losing that playoff game to Mahomes in the final 13 seconds of regulation and losing the coin toss in overtime. That's going to be the fuel of their season. They want to get to the Super Bowl this year. And I know the Bills have struggled against the Titans in recent history. In the re- couple of recent years, but this time around, I think the Bills get over the Titans. I'm taking the Bills. Yeah, give me the Bills to get to two and zero and drop the Titans to zero and two, zero and two, and get some revenge on the Titans for the last few seasons when they lost to them. Uh, I think the Bills might end up winning like fourteen or fifteen games this year. I think so too. Dude. I think they could have that good of a season. Yeah. And up, finally, last but not least, we got the Minnesota Vikings going to Philly to take on the Philadelphia Eagles in the second Monday night game. The Vikings just manhandled the Packers, and the Eagles took care of their business against Detroit, almost let Detroit back into it. But Jalen Hurts yeah. and uh, his weapons, they were just getting – they were. it was close for a little bit until they really, until they really started pulling away. Jalen Hurts really loves using A.J. Brown, that's for sure. And Devontae Smith, and they were just getting after it. Grant, and they almost let him back in it. But different story around with the way Minnesota just manhandled Green Bay. I'm gonna take the favor and I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with Minnesota to get the two and zero and go into Philly and just beat the Eagles. I'm taking the Vikings. Yeah, give me Minnesota to get to two two and zero. They looked good last week. They really uh, got to Aaron Rodgers. They made him. They uh, they sw- uh, they swamped him and um, you know he couldn't really do anything. They really smothered him on defense. That they did. Yeah, yeah, I, I like the Vikings in this one. Yep, and there you have it for our week two picks. We got Chiefs over the Chargers. We split on the Steelers and Patriots game. Our first split of the year. We got. The Panthers beating the Giants, the Browns over the Jets, Colts over the Jaguars, Ravens over the Dolphins, Buccaneers over the Saints, Commanders over the Lions, Seahawks going into Le- Levi's and getting an upset win. You know, this will that will be a good game too, depending on how Trey Lance performs. Rams over the Falcons, Raiders over the Cardinals, Texans, I mean Broncos over the Texans. Bengals in the lock of the week over the Cowboys, Packers over the Bears, Bills over the Titans, and Vikings over the Eagles. And that's our week two picks. Drop your picks down in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell. Thank you all for the support that you all have been showing over the years. Shout out to my boy Luis for the cover photo for, you know, the picks, you know, the thumbnail pick. Shout out to Luis for that. And me and Dallas are going to sign out. I'm going to be relaxing now. And... Let's see how we do this week, Dallas. Yep, we'll see um, how we do this week. Yep, we did 9-6-1 last week. We'll see how we do in week two. Catch y'all later. If you ain't with it, you ain't infamous. And as always, go Seahawks.